Let's talk a little bit about these levels of business analysis and how they are effective or how they work in the various organizations. The idea of strategic, tactical, and operational business analysis is a recognition that business analysis is not just one thing or one size fits all. Actually, if we look at organizations, every organization needs some level of strategic business analysis. And the goal of strategic business analysis is to figure out, do we want to do anything? What should we be doing? What projects should we be doing? Or what kind of changes do we need to implement? Tactical business analysis is taking the results out of strategic business analysis where you would have a defined project or initiative and figuring out what are all of the lower level details, the pieces that have to work together. And this is the domain that most people who have the title business analyst live in. Getting the requirements, getting the user stories, getting the features lists and uh, those kind of things depending upon your methodology are the, is the backbone of business analysis at the tactical level. And operational business analysis is actually done by everyone in the organization at different points in time. It is when you're dealing with the day-to-day -day life, finding problems, figuring out what needs to change, or actually implementing those changes, that's what falls into the category of operational business analysis. So these are three very distinct levels of business analysis, and each of these levels has some common tools and techniques that they use, but there are also some things that are going to be different from one organization to the next. So let's talk about strategic business analysis, what it really is. Strategic business analysis looks at a larger part of the organization or the organization as a whole and does things like creating business problem statements, identifying what's wrong with the way things work today. Or conversely, they can look for opportunities, which basically is the flip side of a problem. Opportunities and problems are kind of like the flip sides of uh, the two sides of a coin in that you can look at it one way or the other, the glass is half full, the glass is half empty. Uh, so whether you're looking at it from the perspective of these are business problems we need to solve or business opportunities we need to take advantage of, either uh, approach will get you to where you can recognize that there are things in the organization that you have to change in order to enable these opportunities to be seized or in order to be able to solve these problems. The ultimate purpose of strategic business analysis is to create what we call a business case. A business case is a decision-making document or tool. It doesn't have to even be documented. It can be vocal, uh, verbal, uh, in any manner. It can be diagrams. But the business case ultimately talks about what should change in the organization, what the benefits of the change are, what the costs of the change are. It provides whoever has the authority to make a decision with the information they need to make an informed decision, we hope, in the ideal situation, they're going to pick the best solution for their organization. The ultimate outcome of strategic business analysis, if you have created a project where the business case was profitable, showed, pro showed that it would be profitable, and management has made that decision, is you're going to initiate a project. And in order to get to a project level initiation, meaning in order to create the kick starting, uh, to kickstart a project, you need to either create business requirement statements, if you're working in a uh, waterfall methodology, or feature lists, epics, user stories, things like that, if you're working in an agile environment. Some of the techniques that are commonly used in strategic business analysis include one that I've referred to before, Kinefin. Kinefin is actually a new framework for quantifying uncertainty, and it basically assumes that anytime you're trying to analyze a situation, a requirement, a user story, an epic, or anything like that, even a project, that at the beginning everything is in a state of what we call disorder. Disorder actually means it has not yet been analyzed, it hasn't been ordered, so we're not really sure what state or what domain it belongs into. Once we've analyzed the situation, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to identify what are the things in the situation that are obvious or simple, meaning there's only one solution, you know what to do, all you really have to do is go out and do it. If things are not in the obvious or simple domain, they might be in the complicated domain. The complicated domain basically says it's something that we need to analyze. We need to understand it better. We know what questions to ask, but we don't really know what the answers are. So we need to find people who have done something like this before, people who are experts in the field, and we have to interview them, we have to talk to them, and we have to get them to explain to us what we need to do. If you're talking to a bunch of different experts, you're going to get a bunch of different answers. What you need to do in the complicated domain is listen to the various experts and out of all of their advice, all of their recommendations, their ideas, you evolve what are called good practices. So you find a solution that will work to resolve the complicated situation. 
If the situation isn't complicated, maybe it's complex. Complex is a lot worse, according to Kenefin. Complex basically means we don't know the questions to ask, let alone what answers to get, and we don't know of anybody that we could talk to to get the answers. If you're in a complex domain, you're basically doing something that, as far as you know, nobody's gone done before. We're going to do something entirely unique, entirely different. In order to get out of the complex domain, no amount of analysis is going to help because you don't even know what questions to ask, which is the hallmark of analysis. Basically, in order to get out of the complex domain, the only thing you can do is try to devise what are called safe-to-fail tests. You de design some kind of test that you could implement that at least wouldn't make the situation worse, whatever else happened. That's the way you try to get from the complex domain. And once you've run some tests, they've been successful, you have a starting point for figuring out how can you expand on that to resolve the problem, making it not so much complex, but more into the complicated domain. The final Kinefin domain is chaotic. Chaotic domain basically is a situation where, well, in the IT world, the worst that could happen probably would be your, your system has been hacked. You uh, don't know that it's been hacked, and until you find out that it's been hacked, all of your data has been revealed, you've been, you have been exposed, and so you don't know the cause, you don't know the effect. Anytime you're in a chaotic situation, the only thing you can really do to try to resolve it is do something. Try to stop the bleeding. Try to figure out something that you can do that would solve the problem at least temporarily, or at least a part of the problem, because the whole situation is so wild, there's no way that you can really know what you should be doing. And, by the way, you don't have time to develop safe-to-fail tests. All you can do is try something. If it's successful, build on it. Try to get the situation under control. And once you have removed the, the chaotic domain of it, then you're into the complex. And then you can figure out how can you make sure that you've resolved that situation and no worse situation arises. There's one thing about the uh, Kinefin framework, by the way, that is implied, and that is people would like to try to solve every problem with a simple solution. If I think the problem is simple and I try to implement a simple solution and it turns out the problem was not simple, what actually happens is the situation then very easily falls into the chaotic domain where we're really scrambling because our production system has just failed. We have no way of getting our production system back up. We don't have backups. We don't have the ability to do a restore or anything else. Kinefin is a phenomenal tool for quantifying uncertainty and it gives you guidance as to how to deal with each given situation. If you know what domain your problem or your user story or your project falls into, it gives you a great idea for where to go from there. Beyond Kinefin, another technique that's very common in the world of strategic business analysis is business problem analysis. Now, business problem analysis is a way of trying to identify what a problem is, who the problems, who is experiencing the problem, what caused the problem. You can do things like Ishikawa diagrams, or you can use Gauss Weinberg problem definition, which is really a simple set of four questions that you're trying to answer in order to come up with the real question. Once you've identified those questions, you can try to look at all of your list of potential problems and try to get to what is called the real problem by applying a thing called Aristotelian problem symptom reduction. So if you can do Gauss Weinberg problem definition augmented by Aristotelian problem symptom reduction, you can be a BA. Really, it's about looking at the list of problems and making sure that, that various stakeholders on the project agree that this is a problem worth solving. It is something that we should be doing, and we understand what it is, and we recognize that there's something wrong. The first question you want to ask of the list is, if it is a real problem, can your project team do anything about it? Meaning, do you have the authority and the resources to address this problem? If not, declare it as out of scope. It's going to be something that it might be a problem, but we're not going to do anything about it. If it is in scope, then we're going to ask the question, well, is it a real problem or is it actually a solution in disguise? Very often when you ask people what's wrong with the current situation, they'll tell you, I don't have this. That's not a problem. That is a potential solution, but unless I understand what problem they're trying to solve, I don't really know whether giving them that would solve the problem or not. We as human beings are a needy bunch. We have a lot of things that we'd like to have, but is it really going to add value? Is it really going to be something that we should be having in order to address the problem we've identified. If I basically, according to Aristotelian problem symptom reduction, if I looked at the problem list and I went through these questions, I would have reduced the list down to things that we identified as being in scope and not solutions, but something that is closer to a problem. Final step is really trying to ferret out symptoms and separate symptoms from solution. And the way to do that, very simply, 
is to go down your list and ask for each item on the list if it is the real problem and you could solve it. Would any other item on the list go away? If anything else disappears as a result of solving one problem, whatever disappeared is really a symptom of the problem you're, uh, that would, you'd have to solve. For instance, if you say problem five is the, is a, uh, uh, if you solve problem five, problem six goes away, six is a symptom of five. That's Aristotelian problem symptom reduction, augmented by Gauss Weinberg problem definition. Great technique if you're trying to come up with some very simple solutions. So we've talked about Kenef and we've talked about problem analysis. A couple of other techniques just to touch on very briefly that you might be familiar with for strategic business analysis, SWOT analysis, something a lot of people have been doing, which is identifying the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats in your business on this particular project. Your most analysis is looking at the mission, the objective, the strategy, the tactics, and trying to make sure that you have all of those covered and all of those identified for the project early on. PESTEL is a, is a uh, cool acronym or a cool monomic that basically stands for looking at the project and trying to understand all of the political ramifications, all of the economics, the social, the technological, the legal, and the environmental dimensions to this particular project. And then there's force field analysis, which is a technique for analyzing the positive and negative factors that are going to be influencing the project and trying to quantify how significant each of them are so that you can analyze what is the likely outcome of this particular project. So who all is involved in strategic business analysis? Well, first off, looking at who is driving the process, that is your C-level executives, such as your CIO, CEO, COO, anybody at the highest levels of management in the organization, or if it's a very large organization, it might even be division executives, division managers, department managers, things like that. And of course, in many organizations, you have an IT strategy team who is also going to initiate projects, who's going to be the driving force. These are the people that have the authority and the knowledge to figure out where the organization should be going and how they want to take it there. The ex executioners in this case, and be very careful, these are not people killing the drivers. These are people that are executing the process. These would be the senior business analysts and aliases under any other name. The business analyst center of excellence, if you happen to have one, your project management office, if there is one, and the line managers, people that are directly in charge of the doing thing. So that's the kind of people that are going to be involved in strategic business analysis.